All right. Um, Tomorrow morning, as Dr. Stovall said, there's a couple activities we'll be doing at the one site. One is dealing with fuel loading, and, and another assignment is RCW habitat. Now, in the fuel loading, there are two parts. I, it's, it's written here, it's written here, it's written all over the place. But I'm going to say it, and the reason it's up here is every year people forget, okay? So don't put these two parts of the fire thing together, okay? You're doing them, it's one assignment, but they don't go together. So I don't want to get a question of how do I take the behave plus stuff and connect it to the fuel loading stuff. You don't have to, don't do it. Uh, it won't work. You'll be wrong. I'll get irritated. And so let's avoid all three. Okay. Now, this is again in the handout, the idea. I got some data that's collected from previous uh, fuel station that I used. It's in the handout I'll give you tomorrow. I don't think I gave it in your, your stuff yet because I Got to give it to you. Um, plus, what each of your crew that's going to be tomorrow you're going to do, you're going to cal calculate down loading material down tons per acre. It's all calculated for you. It's fairly easy algebra. I have no faith in your ability to do so. Um, oh, by the way, this is not Silver Culture Week. It's Sarcasm Week. In case you were wondering, so, uh, you're going to have to perform the, the calculations to do this on on the surface fuels by size class, and it's calculated in ton per acre. Tomorrow, the most important thing is this highly technical tool called a go-no-go -no -go gate, okay? I'll show you how to deal with it tomorrow. You, I do have faith in your ability to do this, okay? You have to identify the appropriate fuel model on the site. If you pay attention to the slide thing and in your handout, it'll be given to you. I have about a 50-50 chance of expecting that. Um, when you have the calculations on herbaceous material and the litter, the calculations give it to you in grams, okay? You, I'm not giving this to you. If you want a spoon, go to the cafeteria. You have to calculate from grams. Well, you guys just got that good. Um, grams to tons, and then you have to go through from two square feet to an acre. You can do it, all right? So what's gonna happen? Each, each crew is gonna go out and, and put out uh, four plot locations. You're, at each of those, you're going to estimate the basal area and trees per acre, and you're going to need that later for your RCW assignment. We're at a different site. Good so far? Right. Sam, you got it? All right. All right. So, downloading materials classified by uh, what we call the uh, time lag or equilibrium kind of thing, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's the idea how long the different sizes get to uh, equilibrium with the environment. Uh, essentially, if it's one, what we call one hour fuels, it's down woody material that's less than a quarter inch in diameter. It does not include pine cones. And um, so if it's that, it's gonna take, basically its moisture content is equivalent to what it, the environment was reflecting about an hour earlier. Then the next size is a quarter inch to one inch and then one to three inch, okay? Just work with it right now and we'll, It'll, it'll work for you, okay? Once things get above three inches in diameter, then we have to start dealing with another idea, the fact that that stuff decomposes. So it's, it, and it's usually the cellulose that breaks down first. So you could have a five inch uh, diameter log and it will be solid or rotten and its weight is gonna be different. So you have to calculate those differently. Uh, each of you are going to be given out. Every every crew is going to have ten plots given to you from previous field station. Each crew is going to do an additional four. Okay, so that's fourteen. All right. Um, and what happened is you extend, and it'll show you how the field you extend a uh, fifty foot tape. Uh, the one hour and the ten hour fuels. It's every piece of woody material that basically intersects that line for the first six feet, okay? It's done that because of algebra, okay? Then for 100 hour, it's 10 feet, and things above 1,000, you got the whole length of the 50-foot tape, okay? So what you're doing is for, for, every, for the hundreds and tens and ones, you are basically, to consider it like hits on the line, okay? So you can just count, one, two, three, four, five, whatever it is, record that number. Okay, keep in mind that it doesn't have to be flat on the ground. It could be two feet up on the ground. It could be a branch that the log is over here, but the branch is extending over. 
and it's it, it's intersecting your lane. It's just not on the tape. Okay. No, it does not include canopy or trees. Okay, we're down with the joke. That sound fairly clear. All right. So, so these are the formula that you're going to be using. Uh, they're in the handout. They're on the website. They're all over the place. Um, so you got a calculation. So just to help you, you got a formula like one hour fuels, 190.7. And as your number of hits divided by six, honestly, God, you don't have to take pictures of this stuff. We give it to you so many different ways. Um, so, uh, you know, if, 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 you, if, if it makes you feel better, please go ahead. Okay. Um, whatever your comfort zone is. Um, now I want you to pay attention. We'll, we'll work on these, but the bottom two, there's a little bit difference in the formula. And it's not the number of hits per thousand hour of fuels. You're actually recording the intersection length on the tape. But I'll show you an example of that in a minute. Okay. We're trying to do this for the first time, see if we can reduce the number of it, uh, questions tomorrow. So N is the number of counts along a six or 10 foot length of tape. The uh, sum of each squared, that's for the thousand hour fuels. Remember, it is not the sum of all the diameters. You do not add all the diameters up and square that. That'll be wrong. And I'll make sure everybody knows you got it wrong. So don't do that, all right? So what you're gonna get is a spreadsheet like this. And so you've got this laid out. And so what you're going to do is each crew is going to do these four, fill in the table. You'll see over here in a thousand hour, solid or rotten. You'll see a period that's 3.5 inches intersection the line. Then you'll see a thing that most students don't use anymore. They're called commas, okay? And, and so the comma is separating the numbers, okay? Unless you're in the Netherlands and then the period means commas and the commas mean periods, okay? So you have that situation. I'm not kidding, that's what they do over there. It was really fun. Uh, fun to watch the class a couple weeks ago go through that. Okay, for an example, we're gonna use plot ones. You got 18 hits on one, uh, one hour fuels, uh, six hits for the 10 hour and none for the 100 hour fuels. Okay, if you have no hits in a size class, what is your mathematical answer? Zero. Thank God. All right, so uh, this is a bright group. That's okay. You'll get used to it. Okay, so honest God, you will laugh. You're laughing right now. Sometime in the next 48 hours, someone's going to ask. Okay, it'll be you. <laughs> All right, so there's different ways you can do it, but you're going to calculate for the whole area and, and divide. So you're going to add them all up. So, so the X, for example, like formula 190.7 over six feet, so 190.7 times 18, divide those two by six, you get 572.1 pounds per acre. Okay, got it all figured out for you. Okay, eventually you'll have to figure out how many pounds goes into a ton, but I figured you could make that work. Yeah. I'm positive. All right, so um, thousand hour fuels, remember there's two formulas. How do you tell if something's rotten or hollow? Solid, if you're out there with it. Kick it. If it's, okay, if it's really rotten, what is it gonna do? Oh, now you're screwed because your sample just got flipping. Okay, how about if it's, it's kind of rotten? What is it gonna sound like? It's going to sound hollow, okay? For uh, the old term for that was a punky log, okay? And so what happens it means the cellulose is broken down, the lignin's still there. So that's one reason why we separate those two is that while the ton is, the weight will be different. Also, how they will burn is going to be different. That's one reason why we separate those two up. So you got the examples there and how to figure it out. So you can go back and figure that out and use that as a crutch. Uh, when you can't remember how to, how to do that. So. Uh, so remember, uh, like in plot one, there are five numbers to square. Got to watch for the commas, record commas, make the comma, who's ever writing it down for your crew, make it real obvious, get space. Don't write, I forget who was, one of you guys was in fire this last, wrote really teeny real letters about like this, and I'm supposed to read that stuff. Don't do that. Make it so everybody can read. All right? <laughs> Pardon? It wasn't you this time. Yeah. I just couldn't read your writing. That was a different thing. So. Uh, all right. So, uh, okay. So just watch for that. Um, that makes sense? All right. So now 
A little bit different when we talk about the herbaceous uh, component and the litter component, okay? Um, just to let you know that we're not quantifying the all of the uh, old horizon, as Dr. Parrish calls it, or I call it duff, uh, but we're just looking at the coverage of the uh, litter layer in a, a two square feet, okay? We're gonna, I'll show you how, we're gonna lay them out tomorrow. I'll show you how that is. And it's really kind of an interesting thing to watch from a crew standpoint. You've got to look at the four that are laid out and decide which one has the most herbaceous cover on it, all right? That is going to be your standard. Then you're going to compare the other three to, if this is that, that what percentage of, is this one of that? And what about this one? And you write down a percentage. I'm giving you the actual grams of a previous sample, which it's going to be a made up number because it actually isn't, but you're going to use that as a calculation. And so you have their subplots. So you have one real number, then you can use, you don't have to clip all four of them and weigh them. You say, okay, this is 60% of that one and 50% of that one. And there's no herbaceous vegetation that records as a, yeah, very good. All right. And so then you can, uh, Add them up, divide by four, and that's a representation of that uh, subplot. And remember, those are two square feet, and so you got to convert that to acres. For example, start out like this, and so let's say you decide uh, that uh, subplot number three was your standard. That, and then the other one was eighty, one was twenty-five, one was zero. I actually, use a zero in the example. I didn't remember I did that. And, and so converted, that becomes 0, 0 0.53, 2.1, and 1.6. And you add those up, divided by four. So the representation there is 1.06 grams per two square feet. And then you expand it to grams to uh, pounds, and eventually tons, but pounds be fine for this point, and then go to um, per acre basis. Litter is going to be pretty more, a lot more consistent out there because you got a lot of pine trees and they're dropping needles and they all tend to come with stuff, but who knows what you're going to see on any plot. Okay, um, we'll go through this again, but I wanted to try to do this so you would kind of think about what you're going to get and so you're, it's not just exposed out there because you're going to be outside, you're not going to be paying attention, you're going to be talking about a bunch of these to each other when you're not supposed to be, and so now you've already gotten it. So, you know, they say good education is repetition. Well, you just got it twice. It's in writing. I said it, and you're going to get it in writing a couple more times. And for some students who've had me in class know how much I love to repeat myself. Uh, you're welcome. Um, tomorrow night, we'll, uh, when we come back, uh, one of the things we'll do is we'll give you a chance to ask more questions. Okay. On things you collected on that one. And then the other part will be the... Um, the idea is that you will get to, um, I'll, I'll give you a chance, anybody who wants, uh, might be interested in study abroad, I'll go quickly through that, by the way. For those who are, uh, if you hadn't heard, those who are like, well, I've, on, on the day we were at the National Park there, we saw about 10 red stags get up and start running. And then about 10 seconds later, we knew why they were running, they were being chased by two wolves. So that was pretty cool. Uh, a uh, little bonus. It took a lot of planning on my part to make that. Okay, so uh, so general information here. Uh, again, we're back. Part two has nothing to do with part one. So don't try to connect the two. Okay, this is a software program used, called Behave. Okay, it's a standard software program. It's on all the computers upstairs. It's in the ones what you have. It's not in the GIS lab, but it's in the other lab that you can have there, the Dendro Lab uh, building. It's on the computers there. If you want your own, go out, go online and get it. Uh, it's free. Um, uh, so assumption in using uh, BA plus is let's assume no matter what you have out there, there's a slope number you have to put in there. It'll make sense later when you see it. Uh, number one, and there's my strong hint: the fuel model is two. Each, each of you are going to run as the same crews that you had in the uh, fuel loading. You're gonna think about what it would be like if you were trying to do a dormant or a winter burn on the property and then a growing season or a summer burn. One of the things that people wanna know is you increase the size of the downloading material, what happens to moisture contents? 
rule of thumb, two to three percent increase as they get larger in diameter. Larger diameter things can simply hold more moisture. Okay, I know that's a surprise. What it doesn't mean is how long it takes for the stuff to burn. It's a little bit of a logic. Why would something a quarter inch diameter take an hour to burn? It's not. So, there's that. So, anyway, that's what happens when you get that. So, general information thing about it. So, again, in the um, winter and dormant, those are kind of temperature ranges they often use prescriptions under. You see the summer relative humidities. Our live fuel moistures differ during growing season and winter dormancy uh, for those who struggled with that in ecology. And let's make the wind the same, same perspective on that. Uh, now, here's the thing. As far as I know, none of you have any experience doing Behave Plus. You don't even know necessarily what a good fire behavior would be because what's the catchphrase? It depends. It depends. Okay, you don't know what your objectives are. So you have to think about that. This is a guess bet. It's not so much that you're going to have necessarily, well, no, let me, let me rephrase this. Most of you will not come up with a really dumb idea. Okay. Some of you might not think about what you have there. So um, previous slide, you know, for the fuel model, I just said, and our photo guide has them. We have these pictures that you can see, you look around and say, oh, that's what it looks like. This model will decide what is going to happen. When you go into Behave Plus, and I can pull it up as soon as I'm done here, and show you what will happen is the idea is that uh, if the box is blue, you don't have to put data in it. So don't try. You can type for, for hours. It won't matter. It's not going to go in. Okay. Now, there's a step here. This is really important. So remember this last bullet here. On, when I, I'll pull it up. I'll show you. When you go into Behave Plus, click on a box word on the top called Configure. Then you click on Module Selection then options, okay? And there'll be a list of things. For whatever reason, Behave Plus does not automatically give you uh, fire line intensity, okay? It gives you two other ones, but it doesn't tell you how much energy is being produced. So I want you to go in and click on that and then you can run Behave Plus for hours and, and it's gonna give you that output, okay? Because those are the three you don't wanna have. So. Enter all the data that's required. Once the data is in, click on it's, we, the fire people aren't that bright. So we have to have things that's really simple. And there's a little thing that looks like a calculator at the top. Click on the calculator. It'll run the program for you. All right. You know, and then go back, repeat, change something a little bit, see what happens. Basically, you want to start creating a range of conditions that you are you think are going to be appropriate. Okay. Think about the site you're looking at, okay? If at the site you see tomorrow morning and, the, and you run a Behave Plus where the flame lengths are 12 feet, is that gonna be an issue? You have to see what's step. If it's a 10 year old Loblolly pine plantation, it's an issue, okay? If you're talking about a 60 year old lob, longleaf pine stand, probably not an issue, okay? Use some logic on that one. What about rising heat? About the canopy, how, how dense is the stand? The heat has to go somewhere. If it doesn't, can't lift up, it's gonna scorch needles. Is that something you're will, willing to live with? That's up to you, okay? So there's a number of things on that one. And I know you don't have a lot of experience on that, but you gotta start somewhere. So this is what we're gonna work on. Now, you're gonna take the two parts and put it in a technical report, okay? Part A is the fuel loading, part B is behave plus stuff, all right? One assignment, two sections that don't go together, all right? This provide me a window of opportunity, a range of things. Does that make sense? So as much as you can tell right now? All right, so, yeah. Yeah, or just, or you can put them all, Basically, until you get it, you can combine them because you're going to have me do them. Yeah, but you can do them separate. I'm not looking for a solid on that one. But the idea is that, or your most, you may have one per, one person in your crew typing up the methods on one and another one on the other. That's fine. Uh, it can be separate. It's, it's one or two or three. Yeah. Each crew is going to have one technical report for both sections. All right. Oh, by the way, 
Make sure that your output, when you get done, has a range of conditions, not just one set. Because basically, if you just give me one set of output, that's saying if you were doing that prescribed burn, that you will only burn legally under those range of conditions. If you burn outside of that, if the wind goes up one mile an hour and something happens, you're liable. Okay. As Joey Silva says with the US Forest Service, be specifically vague. Okay. It's even better than it depends. All right. So you kind of say, yeah, I want to burn it, but I'm going to keep it really wide range of that stuff. Okay. So that'll be the first activity. The other one is RCW habitat. The first site we're going to go to. You guys can decide whether it's an RCW site or not. That's up to you. This is a memo. So, so you're going to use the fuel loading site that I just described. And that's one reason is that's why we're having you collect the basal area trees per acre there. Plus the second site you're going to, you can compare the two sites. Again, for each crew is going to put in four plots. Okay, one chain interval, send you along the road, just go in. And each of you, you're going to estimate basal area, trees per acre, and the basal area is using the 10 factor prism. Hopefully, that's what we've got. We don't know what site, what factor prism we got. Do you know, Jeremy? Well, we asked Cam to get them. No, uh, let's go. Okay. <laughs> okay, you're going to compare the two, answer the questions on the memo. And go for there. So basically, while it's, I'm making it a memo, uh, briefly describe the methodology, which you can take off what I just gave you and what's in here and what's online. Okay. And then describe and compare the basal area and site conditions for the two sites. Describe a brief prescription for each site for RCW uh, habitat management over the next 25 years. In the helpful information stuff, there is some information on what is good RCW habitat. Okay. Keep in mind, recommendations must be legally viable, i.e. don't want to deal with RCW, I'm going to shoot them all, is not a uh, good plan, all right? Uh, keep an eye on the fuel models on the two sites. Are they different? Why are I not? Because that may dictate a little bit on how your approach to management is going to be. Okay. All right, just want to give that stuff up front. We'll see what happens. <laughs> see if that works. All right, so. Okay, let me run, show this figure real quick. All right, so, um, so basically, we have to click on Behave Plus, it's going to show up uh, like this. Um, I'm not going to use the fuel model that you're using for this one. Let's do my all time favorite, number four. Okay, you see how so, some blue things became white? There you go. See, so you don't, you can click on live herbaceous moisture all you want, it won't matter. So we are talking about something here. Let's say it's 10% moisture content in the smaller stuff. Let's make it 13. 16. Anybody notice what I didn't do at the beginning when I told you everybody to do? Yes, thank you. There's the configure, module selection, surface fire spread information, options, and fire line intensity. All right. It has a lot of helpful things there. You have to click OK all over the place. All right. So, live woody moisture. If you're not sure what the range might be, click on that arrow. It tells you what it can be. So let's just do it for one example. Let's make this 5%. Uh, we said what? 1%. No, let's make this 15%. So how fast do you want that wind pushing up some uphill? 53%. How much? 53%. Oh, God, you're not going to burn that. Not even in California. Yeah. Let's make it 20. This one. All right. So, calculator. So it is moving at 756 chains per hour. It's producing that kind of fire line intensity and the flame length is 56.7 feet tall. Welcome to California Chaparral. That's what I just, you, that's what you guys just lit off. Okay. <laughs> that's why there's no trees over California Chaparral. 
Okay. And then you can then you can go back, you know, there's that you got that fuel model, Caparel. Then you can click up again and then you can change it, see if the output changes. You can start playing around with the numbers a little bit. Okay. So that's behavioral. So um, questions on that right now? All right. So I think that's everything I wanted to cover. All right.